Hello friends, can you afford to be wasting materials in Bloodline? Should you be ascending your epic, rare, even common characters? In this video, I'd like to talk about the pros and cons of doing that and explain to you why I think that it's okay to ascend your lower rarity characters. If we were to head over to the Facebook group for Bloodline Heroes of Lithus and we were to ask a question, whether or not we should ascend our lower rarity characters, I can tell you now and from experience that you would have a horde of people telling you Never ascend anything that isn't mythic past five stars. You are wasting your materials. One thing is blatantly clear, and that is that when you get to the end game, you are not going to be using a rare quality character. So why in the world would you ascend a character past rank five if it is of a lower rarity? Well, one of the initial pros that I can think of is that you need to get through the story. You need to get through it now, not later. And when you get through it now, that's going to increase the yield in your districts. It's going to increase the amount of companions you can have. And it's going to increase the access that you have to a lot of resources throughout the game, including clan challenges, event rewards, you name it. So I think having early power can sometimes outweigh the loss that you might have from putting ascension materials into those characters. But wait, do you need to be wasting ascension materials just because you put them into a lower rarity character? Well, you actually don't, because you can actually raise the rarity of any character that you have. You have the ability to take somebody from common straight to mythic. And that is something that you don't need to worry about anymore. Of course you're not going to still be using a rare character when you're level 500, but you don't need to use it because you can increase its rarity. When you are ascending at the altar, you need to have a certain number of exact copies of your character, that being the clan and the gender, and you will also need a certain number of other characters at a specified star level. Now those exact copies that you are putting into your character can be of a higher rarity, and if they are, you will gain that higher rarity on your original character. Meaning that if you have a 14 star rare character, you can then make that character a 15 star mythic character in one fell swoop. And I will leave a little warning that I don't think that you should take your rares, commons, or epics, or even legendaries up to 15 stars, because if you are 15 stars, I don't believe that you can ascend, and if you can't ascend, you won't be able to raise the rarity to mythic. However, any traits that are already on that character, aside from their clan trait, will not be ranked up to equal the rarity that that character becomes. What are we going to do about this glaring discrepancy that should be keeping us from ascending our lower rarity characters? Well, luckily that's an easy fix. As many of you probably know, getting yourselves a mythic quality companion, preferably a one star, that being the Trevain, the Griffin, or the Sallyhorn, getting yourself a one star companion will give you a free trait farm. You can just keep courting and raising and gaining free traits after free traits and you do not need to worry about that. It will cost you in some wedding rings. And some of you might be saying that wedding rings are valuable and somewhat rare and I do not want to be wasting them. Well I have more good news for you. But first... If any of the information in this video has put your mind at ease about ascending your characters and making your team as strong as possible, then feel free to put my mind at ease by hitting that like button for me. When you go through a marriage these days, you get to gain a stat called Vigor. And that Vigor will give you base stats, that being Constitution, Strength, and Fortitude. And all of these stats will stack up and keep getting stronger as you keep marrying them off. So at the end of the day, needing to marry off all of your traits is actually a benefit because you're going to end up more powerful after having done that than if you hadn't married them off at all. As you can see, the arguments against ascending your characters at a low rarity are falling apart quickly. In fact, I can't think of a single argument that holds any water anymore now that the Vigor system is here to offset the cost of the wedding rings to marry off the traits that would not normally level themselves up. However, this does not mean that you should use only some rare versions of some people that you saw as S tier on a tier list on YouTube when you have other mythics that could perfectly fill the role. When a character is higher rarity, it will have better base stats, and it will scale better with levels. 
Therefore, if you have mythics that you could be using, it is most likely better than your quote-unquote S-tier character that is still sitting at rare quality. This is mostly used for when you don't have somebody to fill the slot. And one of the times that that is a problem is when we come to something like frontliners, supports, and in our case both, which is the female Lionstone. She's almost mandatory. Of course you can play without her. You shouldn't ever let anybody tell you you must have a character on your team. But if there ever was a character that fit that description, it would be the female Lionstone because her burst damage is just absurd. She provides something for the team that you can't get anywhere else. You don't quite need it on your team, but it is extremely helpful when you have it. Even in this extreme case, which in my opinion is the best case for using a blue over a mythic, I still would never do it. I would certainly use a legendary over a mythic and I would ascend them to my heart's content and not worry about it. But at a certain point, you need to use the characters that you have been blessed with and move along. In summary, you don't need to worry about ascending your lower rarity characters because you can always increase their rarity and having to marry off the traits actually nets you an increase in power. That being said, this should not be an excuse for you to continue to use rare characters that you saw on a tier list somewhere near the top when you have other mythic characters that are going to get the job done just fine. Those mythic characters that you may not have seen at the top of the tier list are still going to outperform your rare quality versions of characters that you did see at the top of the tier list in most cases. There are some fringe cases that could be argued for. I still think that going with the mythic is the better choice, and it is certainly the thing I would suggest to people watching a video like this. Coming soon will be some short guides on how to use each character, and if you want to stay tuned for that then you can hit the purple panda icon on the right of the screen to subscribe now. On the left you're going to see a video that YouTube thinks that you would like using their algorithm, isn't that nice of them? But for now, I have been RagePanda1, I want to thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.